Now let's see how space vector PWM works. We know that the motion of space vectors for the case of a balanced surface sinusoidal is a rotating magnetic field. For the three-phase inverter, basically the high side switch is S1, S3, S5 with two status on off can generate eight combinations. Each combination gives specific voltage VAN, VBN, VCN. VBN plus VBN plus VCN generated a rotating space vector V. For example, VE can be calculated by the decomposition DQ of VAN, VBN, VCN. We can get all values from V0 to V7. When synthesizing a space vector with a reference vector, the feasible space in the DQ plan is a hexagon, as shown in the figure. Then the active space vectors divide the hexagon into six triangular sectors. In the first sector, the active vectors V1 and V2 are used. To combine two adjacent vectors into a specific vector in between, we just need a coefficient before each vector, d1 and d2. They represent how big of v1 and v2 can be used to synthesize the reference vector. Then we can write them into dq axis. We see that the q axis can derive T2, then place T2 in D axis, we can get uh, D1. Here, this formula is used to derive the D1 into this form. So, recently, we want V1, V2 existing at the same time, but we know that we can't have V1, V2 at the same time because they are different combinations of switches. But if we just turn on V1 and uh, briefly turn on V2 in a very small cycle time, Tz, we can still get a similar result thanks to average effect on DQ axis. The rest of Tz we just fill with V0 or V7 since they are non-vectors, thus won't impact the reference vector. For the second vector, we also put the reference on dq axis to calculate d1, d2. We just need to time sense system for d and time cosine system for q. Then uh, equation 2 minus equation 1 to eliminate d1. Use again this formula to simplify and then d2 is derived. The same principle applies on D1. We just need to time a correct factor to eliminate D2. This calculation can be done for each sector. Thus, we get a relationship between sector number N and the duty. And the reference vector can be calculated from ABC phase voltage by ABC to DQ matrix. Now let's see how exactly the switches are on off. There are a few rules. First, the switching sequence is made symmetrical in order to minimize switching losses. Second, both V0 and V7 are used to smoothly take over the previous vector with the least uh, switching need. For the first sector, if we follow the V1, V2, and V0 to switch, we can see that for each cycle, we need to switch S1 twice and S5 three times, S3 zero times. It's not a balanced way. We can try another way to switch. This uh, mode switch more S3. The most optimal way is this one. We have all S1, S3, S5 only switch uh, once a cycle. I draw the optimal switch pattern for S1 for each sector. 
for all high services, you can find the link in the show notes. Now let's see an example of implementation in MATLAB. I put the MATLAB simulation link in the show notes. This example uh, derive the reference uh, vector from the three-phase uh, voltage reference. They decide the D and the Q and also the, the angle between the Q. Uh, then we should decide the sector, the alpha over uh, 60 degree to decide which sector are we in. Once we have the sector number, we can use uh, the formula we get to decide uh, the duty and uh, the turn on time. To generate the PWM, we need to synthesize these times according to sector. Sector can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If a sector is 1, we are in the first sector, so the switch is 1 uh, for the phase A should be on for T1, T2 and uh, half T0. And uh, if uh, we are in sector 2, then the S1 should be on only for T2 and uh, half T0. This uh, clock generates uh, a counter to count from 0 to Tz. Compare it with the S1 switching time, we can decide if uh, enough switching on time is over or not. As long as the T S1 is bigger than this counter, we can keep S1 on. Now we can get the same switching mode for all sectors.